I'm four and zero after uh, Sunday oh, after last okay. night. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, right. Let's go. Yeah. Things are going well. <laughs> Joining us now is NASCAR Hall of Famer, two-time winner of the Daytona 500, absolute legend from the great state of North Carolina. <laughs> it's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale, how we doing, man? I'm doing great. Just kind of cruising through the early part of the week here, getting ourselves ready for another race weekend. Dale, we've heard that you've played fantasy for a long, long time. How did you get started in this whole thing? Yeah, we got a league. It's called the Basement League. The reason why we call it the Basement League is because we do all the drafts at my house in my basement. I have a little nice, bar downstairs, nice. and that's just why we call it the Basement League. But it's been around for at least 15 years. Wow. Um, probably wow. more than, probably more, maybe more than that. It's about 12 of us, and I would say that six or eight are original members. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it, and this year I got, I'm 4 0 after uh, Sunday oh, or after last okay. night. Oh, shit. Yeah, right. Let's go. Yeah. Things are going well. <laughs> I was going to say 15 years. That's that makes sense why you're so passionate about it right and yeah. that's what i that's what i love about fantasy sports there's obviously some toxicity in there but for the most part it brings people together it keeps them invested in the game and themselves in the community and it brings something that they're looking forward to every year during football season i'll tell you one thing that it did for me austin is up until i played fantasy i just watched i was a big washington commanders fan and i still am today and Sorry. Um, it's been a difficult 30 years but uh <laughs> i only watched watching Washington games only, right? I, I really didn't care about any other team. And so when I started playing fantasy, man, I'm watching other teams. I'm learning about other players. I know, you know, all of these things right. about the game that I, I paid no attention to before. I was only probably tapping into about 10% of the enjoyment of the game. Right. Until I played fantasy. Is there a punishment for getting last? Do you guys have that in, in the yeah. basement league? Yeah. Basically, we do a $40 buy-in in our league, but the last place has to buy the $40 buy-in for the champion. Okay. So, yeah, okay. so last place is going to spend 80 bucks to get back into the league next year. I mean, I know there's probably more sensational punishments. and it's all good. Um, But I always wondered, man, if it, you know, when you have a sensational sort of, you know, thing that the loser has to do. I mean, how do you even hold that guy accountable? He could just balk and walk away and say, I don't even want to be in the league anymore if I've got to do that. How familiar are you with Fantasy NASCAR? Uh, did it ever impact your driving career? Do you play now? Fantasy NASCAR wasn't super big back when I was racing, so I didn't get the kind of criticism that I yeah. think the guys probably get now. And you know what's funny is I play Fantasy NASCAR now. We have a group wow. of folks to kind of play. When a driver does bad, for whatever reason, I don't feel the same way I do when, when a player doesn't get the numbers, right? And my fantasy team. Okay. It's so weird. <laughs> okay, because, so that's a, di that's a different feel, huh? But I don't know why. I really don't know why, because it's the same thing, you know, and you feel like uh, a real loser when you don't do well. Right, right. You so, know? I'm curious. You, let's do, you do. Dale, before we let you go, we do want to hear about your uh, your new children's book, uh, Buster's yes. Trip to Victory Lane. Uh, tell us about that, man. Yeah, I got the book right here. Um, Buster's Trip to Victory Lane. I'm a father of two girls, and when they you know, came into my life, a lot of children's books started flooding the house. And I was really interested as to why they were uh, attracted to just certain books. But hopefully down the road, as I get older, I'll have guys and girls coming up to me saying, man, I read this book when I was little and it's one of my favorite books when I was a kid. That'll mean a lot to me. You know, Buster goes through a lot of challenges and learns a lot about himself and his friends. But there's a lot of little Easter eggs in the book as well. Buster, the uh, star of the book, that's my father's nickname when he was a little boy. There's a couple other little Easter eggs in there that are that connect to me personally that I'm proud of. But hopefully people like it. Where can we find it? Yeah, anywhere books are sold, but you can get it on Amazon pre-order now. Absolutely appreciate you sharing that today. And I'm hoping that uh, yeah, people can find some type of value within the story with Buster as well. Well, I appreciate y'all having me on. It's been great to talk to you, Matt, Austin. It's awesome, awesome to meet you. I can't wait to go on my fantasy chat and tell all my buddies <laughs> that I got to talk to you today. And Likewise. Uh, yeah, uh, they'll be excited to hear that. And appreciate you guys giving me some time.